in a world where we absolutely cannot make another John Wick film. Thank God. We need a new action mannies to root for, but not just any man. He's like an ape man. Monkey man. I'm monkey man. I'm a superhero. I fight crime, monkey man. I'm monkey man. In a landscape of franchises that have been absolutely beaten to death, and then some, and never-ending brain-dead multiverses. I long for the days of the standalone action film. You know, the one and done. The average random man coming into a situation and using his fists and skills to get through it. So I was intrigued when I heard that Dev Patel, the kid from Slumdog Millionaire and many other films, was making a standalone action film that he both wrote, directed, produced, and starred in. I'll admit I am a sucker for an underdog story, especially when the person making that underdog story is an underdog. Now I like to give two scores when I rate a movie. I like to give the critic score, but I also like to give a schmo rating for the average Joe Schmo, that's you, because I understand that not everyone really has a critic's eye or even cares. They'd, some people just want to watch a satisfying movie. So that's what this score is for. So for my highbrow hoity-toity critic score, I give Monkey Man a solid 6 out of 10. But for my Joe Schmo, for the average Joe rating, I give Monkey Man a 9 out of 10. I think if you're a fan of the John Wick series and just action movies in general, I think you'll be pretty satisfied with this movie. I think it's a little bit long for the average moviegoer, and I'll get into that when I get into the bigger critique of why that is. But for the most part, I think there's enough there to keep, you know, the average audience occupied. So for the average schmo who wants to go to the movies, not be disappointed and have a good time, I highly recommend Monkey Man for you. Now, that being said, I'm going to get into the critical review of the movie, which I'll do my best not to give too many spoilers, but I will have to talk about specific things to get my point across. So if you want to watch the movie for yourself and develop an opinion, which I highly recommend, this is where we part ways, friends. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Now, I always like to start my critiques with what I liked about this movie. And there were a lot of things that I did like about this movie initially. First and foremost, obviously, the cinematography, the shots, the angles, it was all very, very well done. Very beautiful. They did a lot of cool and interesting new things. I will say, though, that there's a lot of shaky camera stuff in this film. And if you are one of the many, many people afflicted with motion sickness, you may have a little bit of trouble with this one. But for the rest of us not afflicted by that, I genuinely enjoyed the bizarre camera angles, the rushed nature, the jitteriness of it, because I felt it wasn't just there for show. Every time there was a jitteriness or a quick flashing of cameras or not showing a lot of things, just fast action, it always went along with the narrative of the character being disorientated or in a situation that what you're not going to see everything. So I appreciated that. But again, I will say it was a bit much every now and then, even for me. The acting for majority of it was good. I mean, it's pretty much Patel carrying the entire film, but the secondary characters, many of them with one exception, did very, very well. It never, I was never snapped out of the movie, you know, because of a bad line or a bad read. I was always engaged and felt it was real. Now, one of my biggest problems with the film, it is broken. You can break this movie into, I guess, three different acts, but the problem is each act feels like a completely different movie, which I think is why it led to the longer runtime of two hours, which is, it's a bit much. We need to get back to the standard of doing a movie in 90 minutes. I know it's difficult to get a story, but we've done it in the past which means we can do it now. So yes, the first act of this movie was by far my favorite. It was very simple. It was very rooted in reality. And that was the big thing that I believe Patel mentioned is that he wanted to make this movie a little bit more realistic. And in the first act, it is very realistic. You know, he is the action star, but unlike other action stars where everything just kind of goes his way, that doesn't happen in this movie. Things take 
a long time. He doesn't just show up, you know, and solve the problem in a week or a few days. It takes months, a long time for him to gain any footholds and continue to do what his character's goal is. And when he fights someone that's bigger than him, it doesn't go well for him. You know, we're not watching 60 year old men jump off of cliffs or run or get hit by things that would completely take them out. And we're not watching unrealistic situations where a small little guy is picking a fight with a gargantuan Hulk for no reason. This is a little side note, but that was my biggest critique of the Reacher, the new Reacher films. Because the guy who plays Reacher is fucking jacked. I mean, he is huge, filled with a cacophony of enhancements. He is basically a living Hulk. So my question is, oh, why would this average size man, in what world is he picking a fight with this dude? In what world? I think this guy may be special. In which case, I, I think this is a crime, Reacher. I think, I think you did a crime. That aside, Monkey Man, for the first part, everything is very realistic. You know, there's a reason the main character can take a punch. It's because he's been in a ring where that's literally his job is to get beaten for a crowd to be entertained, you know? And even then, he's still not a great fighter. He still gets his butt kicked. Things don't work out for him. He has to plan and scheme and things take long, long time. Everything takes time. Everything, again, was rooted deeply in reality, which I liked. However, by the second act, this starts to go out the window. So in the second act, the film takes a 180 turn. It goes from a simple revenge story to an overarching, larger political scheme, you know, religious guru, God type Olympus story, which again, they're playing off an old uh, Indian story, uh, Hamaman. So I understand why they wanted to do that, but it was just weird introducing it like an hour into the film because at that point it really felt like I was watching a completely different movie. It felt like I had just restarted and begun watching a new film. Now again, I appreciate us getting a montage of him training, you know, showing how he's getting these things for his inevitable final clash with the big boss. But the pacing was so different. The the change of the stakes, the change of everything was so jarring. It just kind of ripped me out of the narrative. But act two was no more near as jarring as act three. Remember all those good things I said about big keeping things in reality and keeping it realistic and rooted and grounded so it doesn't rip you out of a narrative? Yeah, in the act three, the final act of the movie, that completely goes out the window. <laughs> And we get some like shitty knockoff John Wick movie in the last act, which completely threw me out of the narrative. All that building in reality and hard work and showing just completely goes out the window for bad guys. Instead of using the guns that we know they have, deciding to be like, nah, 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 let's all fight them fisticuffs like men. Why? Why would you do that? Or we have like main bosses, you know, some of the big bads deciding not to shoot him, but deciding to fight him one-on-one -on -one when they just saw him fight a room of like 40 men with his bare hand. In what world would you risk fighting a man who just beat 40 men with his bare hands? Why would you decide to challenge him to a fist fight and not just shoot him? It makes no sense. Uh, it just keeps going. Again, I'm not gonna spoil it too much for you, but there were many many more glaring narrative problems, but it the third act really just threw me out of the entire movie. Uh, it was just so over the top, nothing makes sense. All the rules and reality go out the window and it really just kind of, honestly, it put a bad taste in my mouth. It was visually appealing to watch and I, I enjoyed that. As soon as I turned off the critic part of my brain, I had more of a good time in the final act. When I left the movie, I felt like I had just watched three parts of three different movies, 
And it just was not very satisfying because I was so invested in the first part. I think if they had just kept in line with the simple revenge story instead of trying to make it this big saving the whole country and blah 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 nonsense political and religious stuff that we do not care about because we haven't had the time invested to care about these things. It just, we just get lost in the sauce. It just was, ugh. Which is an overarching problem that I see in a lot of narratives where people think if it doesn't change the world, then people won't be invested in the story, which could not be further from the truth. People do genuinely care about the big picture, but most people really, really gravitate onto the simple character, the individual. And I feel like they lost that when they tried to go for the grander narrative halfway through the movie. Despite all the things that I feel went wrong in the narrative, I still had a pretty enjoyable time once, you know, I was able to turn off my critic brain. For his first attempt, I think it was a pretty good shot, and I am genuinely uh, looking forward to what he does in the future if he gets a second chance, which I hope that he does. So yeah, Monkey Man, critic-wise, I gotta give it a 6 out of 10 just because of the narrative, the glaring narrative problems. But I again assume that your brain doesn't work like mine and you don't care about those things. The average show schmo is gonna have a good time and I would recommend seeing this movie to my friends. So have a good day and I'll catch you at the next one.